Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we are gonna be talking about flathead ignition systems from both stock all the way up to the most wild and obscure stuff and uh, what you need and what you need to know if you're just getting into this stuff and maybe save you a little money or see which one you might like. Now, I recently, what got me thinking on this is I recently just got my like jewel of a, of a rare ignition set up uh, for my 33 back from Mason Racing Ignitions who is one of the best uh, mag guys and ignition guys in the country for vintage stuff. And uh, I put all this together and it got me thinking after doing, after shooting the breeze with him, uh, a lot of people don't know why certain ignition systems are so expensive or they get ones that are uh, maybe not the best for them and they spend a lot of money when they're getting into a flathead. So I'm gonna cover some of the basics on these different types of mags, what to look for, maybe a roughly what to spend or what they go for, and then hopefully it'll help you when you're building up a hot flathead, you can decide on which ignition system would be best for you. All right, so let's jump right in. Now, the first thing I'll say, like a lot of these videos, I am not uh, telling you guys that I am the know-all with everything that is, whatever topic we're talking about. So today, ignition, I am probably going to skip over some different ignition types or rare distributors or ignitions or some things like that. What I'm trying to do is give you guys a basic understanding. If you're just getting into this, this is definitely geared towards the beginner, entry-level guys, of what you need to look for and some of the different stuff on why these are more obscure or rare or, or price-wise or different things like that. So we're gonna start with just the stock ignition. So I gathered up just some random stock stuff I had laying around. It didn't have as much as I expected, but um, the first one that you're gonna experience that's on, I think it's from 32 to 41, if I remember correctly. And this one's been modified, actually. This is my test distributor I use. Um, but this distributor, they have a three bolt mounting on the back of these. And uh, that's a lot of times they're called three bolts or diver's helmet um, style distributors. These distributors, now the 32s were very slightly different, but overall they're pretty much all the same. They're a huge pain in the ass to adjust the points and the timing and everything on them. You basically need a machine to adjust, edit, to adjust them. So they were very, very difficult to work on for the average guy, and you really need one of those big distributor machines to kind of set them up, or one of those uh, K.R. Wilson style distributor things that you can put in there and actually set the points and stuff with them. So this style distributor, they have the wires that come out either side, and there's a secondary cap that's on the inside here. This is basically just like a dust cover or boot, and then there's a cap inside, and there's two separate caps to have the contacts on them, that runs on the rotor on the inside. A couple things about these, a lot of people like to change these out, especially if you're not building a 100 point restoration car. Uh, one big thing about these is they have the coil is actually mounted right on top of the distributor. This is, again, this is my test distributor that I use to like test fire engines. If I'm having a problem, I can bolt one of these right on and test it. Uh, this one has a conversion where you can actually put a plate over it and uh, put on a little uh, section here that you can just run a normal external coil. These coils were bad because it's right in the front of the engine and they get hot. If your engine gets hot, they get hot, they break down, and a lot of times your car will not start when it's hot or it will start to break up when it gets hot when these coils go bad. So a common thing to do was to move to an external coil on these, um, but if yours works well, just leave it. If it works and, and it works fine, just leave it. Uh, they do work well when they're set up correctly, but if you need to change one out, uh, they can be a pain to work on. Uh, you basically can't access anything on the front here. So imagine with a grill and everything in there, it's, it's very hard to, to mess with. So that is the 32 to 41 style uh, distributor, the diver's helmet style distributor. The next one that I have next to it, I don't have, for some reason I don't have a cap laying around, I don't know why, but we'll drop a photo in. Uh, this was the, the crab style distributor. Uh, you can see with the cap off, it's much smaller. And you can see the inside of here. Now these are dual point distributors. There's a dual sets of points here on these. These are a little easier to work on. It has a more, I guess you could say modern, but a little bit more normal of a distributor cap that you would see on here. Now it's specific to this obviously, but uh, it isn't like the diver's helmet. Uh, this one, uh, they're much easier to work on. It has the, um, the condenser that's on the outside here that you can change really, really easily. And this was used on 42 to 48 distributors, uh, 42 to 48 flatheads. These are super easy. They're also called two bolts. 
These are super easy to swap out for the diver's helmet. If you want something that's a little easier to work on and something that's parts are a little easier to get for and all of that, uh, you can swap these out. Basically, you just take the timing cover, take it off, put on a two bolt cover, put on your two bolt dis uh, crab style distributor and you know run everything like you would normally for uh, sparkle wires and you're pretty much up and set and running, which is really great. Again, you could run an external coil on these right out of the box, which is really great. But the biggest thing as far as hop-up type stuff goes, um, this is this distributor you can't really get a Petronic setup for. These you can get like a drop-in Petronic setup. So if you're looking to go something a little more modern, it's a little easier uh, to, to work on, you can do that with this style distributor. So that's why it's common to mess with. This has a, a uh, vacuum brake on it that is something that's commonly messed with on these distributors um, that causes problems. So basically, in a short description, this is going to change how quickly it's going to ramp up to your total advance. Um, it also changes with different loads um, with the advance on this. A lot of times people will just take these out completely. You do kind of need these in here uh, to have at least a little bit of pressure on these. There's like a leather boot in there or a leather, I guess you could say gasket or seal in there. Um, and when you run this all the way out completely so there's no pressure, you may have some erratic timing on this. But the nice thing is if you just turn it in just a little bit, basically till it pings, that was the Ford way, uh, or I'm sorry, Knox, that is basically the Ford way to set these, which is pretty simple. You keep turning it out till it, till it knocks and then you turn it back in till it stops knocking and you're pretty much good. So that's the 42 to 48 crab style distributor. The last one, again, I just have a cover here. This is the APA style. This has a distributor that comes out that is a more of like a modern style distributor that you will see, like a small box Chevy or something would have. This looks sort of like that. A lot of people prefer these. Comes out to the side, it's up above so you can actually service it and work on it up above the engine a little easier. Again, this timing cover, now the little difference is, is with this it actually has a gear that runs in here um, off of the cam off the front here and comes down at an angle so you can't just swap these one for one. Uh, there is a little bit of change that needs to be done on those to do that. You may need to change to an APA cam to run that, I think, on these. But basically with the APA style, very similar uh, as far as the function goes. You even into the later flatheads, they had a vacuum advanced style um, that you needed a specific carburetor to go with this style distributor. But if you get like the 4950 ones, uh, they are pretty, pretty good to work on and they're pretty easy to find. And there's a lot of conversions out there, like even modern, like Mallory and um, Unilite. There's a bunch of different ones that you can just put a drop in, like electronic distributor for them. So that's why a lot of people prefer the APA style, but they were found on 49 to 53. Uh, if your engine has the water necks in the front of the heads, it would have taken this style distributor. Uh, that's the easiest way to remember it. All right, for hopped up stock ignition, this is probably the best bang for your buck if you want a hotter spark and you want something that possibly, if you're afraid of working on points, a lot of people want electronic, they do start a little bit quicker a lot of times with the electronics. So there is a few options. Like I mentioned in the beginning, the diver's helmet, there isn't much out there for this uh, particular distributor that you can just hop up right out of the box. Now, people used to do different things with, with bending the springs and stuff inside for the points to um, to change it back in the early days of hot rodding. But as far as like drop-in options, there isn't really a lot available for this aside from sending it someone to have the distributor actually modified internally. But you just at home with uh, just your mitts, there isn't a lot you can do. Now the 42 to 48, that's why, again, why a lot of people swap to it. You can get a Petronix conversion. You can get a drop-in distributor from uh, a bunch of different options out there. I think even Stromberg recently came out with the E-Fire, which is supposed to be a pretty good uh, bolt-on option for electronic uh, ignition for these that looks kind of stock. Uh, and again, you can get the Petronics, you can take the points out, slide it in. So there's a few different options there that you can run with this one. So if you have an earlier engine, you can run this style two bolt distributor and put one of those dro either drop-in options or swap out the guts for electronic ignition. Now the APA, I mentioned as well, there's a lot of options out there that you can get for the APA uh, that are just drop in, uh, that you can put it right in there and fit and it has electronic ignition is something a little more modern. The other thing is a, a common uh, conversion to do on this for quite a while was to actually modify a small block Chevy distributor to fit the APA timing cover. So there was a bunch of different services out there that were doing that and guys were kind of doing it themselves. That was uh, from, what I understand was a lot more common before a lot of the drop-in ones came available, um, but that was kind of 
a good way that you could swap out for a stock style distributor with stuff that's just in the junkyard. You could swap it out and do that. But same thing, you can put you could put Petronics um, electronic conversion in one of the APA ones as well. And it's really simple thing that you can just throw in and, and get you up and going. So that's the basic ways that you can hop up your stock ignition. But if your stock ignition is working, it works fine. Don't really need to change it unless you're really hopping up the engine, you're getting the something more than just basically a stock engine or lightly modified. All right, so next thing we're gonna get into is probably the next step up for, uh, as far as cost goes, is a aftermarket dual point ignitions uh, setup that's basically like a complete drop-in setup. Uh, there's a number of options out there. In, in modern day, there is a lot of options, like we've mentioned earlier, Unilite and all these different whatever ones that uh, I'll forget. But we're gonna talk about some of the vintage stuff because you see it out there and people don't understand why maybe it's so expensive or why people go after it or uh, why people say negative things about it, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, basically the, with the dual, the aftermarket dual point, a lot of them kind of had like a gimmick on what would make them better as far as having maybe a hotter spark. Maybe they had heavier springs on the points or, or the, the timing curve on it was more aggressive. There's a bunch of different stuff. A lot of it was like marketing or just a different design um, but there was a bunch of different ones out there one of the common ones that pops up it's really neat looking it uses the three bolt timing cover is the Lucas dual point so this has this funny looking cap and from what I understand these were actually made for the Allards so the uh, race cars that use flatheads in Europe they use this they made this Lucas distributor that is a dual point distributor uh, has everything built inside of it, uses a three bolt cover, has a special distributor cap that looks really bitching when it's all put together, but um, it's specific to this distributor. So if you don't have the cap, they can be expensive to find. You every now and then see them on like, um, like British eBay and different things like that. But um, these use the three bolt cover, but the, the big, I'd say gimmick for me on these that's kind of neat is they have the slotted they have the slots here for the mounting holes, so you can actually adjust the timing just a little bit uh, right on the fly, so to speak, where you can just loosen your three bolts and you can adjust this, whereas the stock flathead ones, you had to actually change it internally. So with these, you could advance your timing just a little bit, which was really nice. So the Lucas's get a bad rap uh, because it's Lucas and electronic. A lot of times that just equals bad and fires, but uh, I know some guys that are running these that actually love them and they work fine. I bought this one years ago at a swap meet. I haven't found the right car to use it on, but they are really, really neat. If you find one without the distributor cap, don't pay a lot of money for it because the distributor caps are hard to find. Uh, if A lot of times you will see that they have cracks in them that have been epoxied and different things like that. Don't pay a lot of money uh, unless you really, really want one. Um, because the caps can be hard to find and a lot of times a cap will cost you 100, 200 bucks for a cap. So if you pay too much for the distributor into it for Magneto money, which you don't wanna be. So that is a Lucas. Probably one of the most common ones you will see and I don't have one laying around for whatever reason is a Mallory dual point. Mallory made dual point distributors for pretty much any engine and they were supposed to have better, uh, more aggressive timing, better points um, in them and they would have, some of them have a vacuum advance, some of them would have a, a uh, mechanical like tack drive on it. Um, they, these are really neat, they're nostalgic, they have different color caps that really don't mean anything, it's just the age of the distributor cap. But again, like all of these, parts that are specific to this distributor are, can be hard to find. So distributor caps can be hard to find if they're broken. This one I'm holding here is actually for a Cadillac, but they all kind of look the same. They'll have their own, um, their own parts on them. So the points are Mallory specific. The condenser is Mallory specific. So back in the day when Mallory was selling lots of these, it was no big deal. You could just from, an, from a speed shop or from Mallory, you could just order all these parts, no big deal. Nowadays, these parts just don't exist or they're very hard to find, especially for the really common uh, distributors. They've been eaten up and used over the years, but same thing, this uses a dual point design on it, um, but has Mallory specific parts. Now the good thing with these are, it's a pretty simple design. Even the Lucas, you can uh, change these over to use more uh, readily available parts or even convert to electronic uh, ignition so that you get the same look uh, with, you get that vintage look with some modern stuff, but that's something a lot of times you have to take to uh, an ignition shop or ignition specialist 
have done. The Mallory's, they're all over the place, especially for APAs. I see them really, really commonly. And they go for a couple hundred bucks to, you know, 300 bucks, something like that. They're, uh, they're out there, they're neat, and uh, they're probably the cheapest and easiest ones to find at a swap meet if you want to get into a retro uh, or nostalgic ignition dual point ignition. So um, there's a bunch of other ones that are, that are out there on the market, but those are kind of like the more, most common ones. Uh, all of those, they, they really range, but a lot of them, they're sub $500. So again, if you want something that's nostalgic, you can grab a dual point distributor and uh, you can put it on your engine. It'll look cool. It does perform a little bit better. And then you can pair it with the, you know, the coils and different things like that, that they sold with these to give you that whole nostalgic look on your flathead. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is dual coil and dual plug type distributors um, for flatheads. So this is where we start getting into some more of the exotic stuff. So there was all kinds of things that people were testing to get like hotter spark and for engines that rev to a higher RPM to have its own coil, different stuff like that. But basically, just like it sounds, the most common ones are dual coil uh, distributors that you will find. There's a bunch of different ones. Um, the most common one you will see as far as like the exotic stuff goes is this Harman Collins dual coil setup. So this particular one is pulled right off an old hot rod and it is actually using old Mallory uh, flash, fi flash fire coils, uh, which are kind of wild looking, but you can use just any coils. And uh, the Harman Collins stuff, again, uses its own parts. So uh, the Harman Collins are probably one of the most sought after ones or common ones that you will find. Um, it, it's common, so to speak. But they use like intermediate parts here um, that we'll, we'll drop in here that there are some intermediate Bakelite parts for like a, like a little ring that's for the second coil. Um, and then there's a secondary ring on the inside. All those parts are made out of Bakelite and a lot of times they break. The distributor uh, rotor is specific to that distributor as well, I believe. And a lot of times they end up breaking if not set up correctly. So like all that stuff combined, a lot of times when you buy these, you'll find just the body and like one of the parts is missing or one of the parts is broken. I think recently somebody started um, reproducing those Bakelite parts, but I wanna say there are hundred two hundred dollars a part or something like that they're kind of expensive so it can get really expensive if you pay a lot of money for a body with no, with none of the bakelite parts on them uh, same thing with this you can take them and have some of the uh, points and some of the condensers and stuff like that swapped over to something more modern if you use an ignition shop uh, the coils themselves you can use whatever with them this one just has these neat coils on it but you could use whatever coils you want uh, but this is a really nice one because they are um, usually, they are the two bolt style, like you can see here. So they bolted right on to the distributor or uh, onto your front cover. If you have a 42 to 48 um, crab style distributor, they bolt right on. Now there was a number of other people that were making dual coil setups from like stock distributors. So the hot setup to do early, back in the early days was to take a Lincoln Zephyr distributor and you actually take that and they would convert it because the road, it looks just like the diver's helmet uh, distributor, but on the Zephyr, it actually had two like races, so to speak, on the, um, or two contact points for the, um, for the, the rotor to ride on and, and in there you can do a conversion to actually create it, turn it into a dual coil setup. So you will see some like Harman Collins, um, I think W and H was another brand dual coil. They were doing conversions to them in the early days. And there was a bunch of just like speed shops that were doing it as well. There's some guys nowadays that are still doing those conversions to sell them. If you want like that early hot rod look, that is the way to do it. You get a Zephyr distributor and you get the conversion done and you run the dual coils and then it's really bitching looking. And it also gives better performance, of course, with having the hotter spark dedicated to each bank of the engine, which is really, really nice. Um, checking my notes here to try and remind myself. So um, Harman Collins, I think also might've had an APA style that went out that was like a, that was a dual, um, that was a dual coil as well for the APA style. Um, one of the like really sought after ones is the Kong. Kong Jackson had a um, dual coil 
uh, distributor. Now those are like really, really kick ass. They go for decent money, but the thing with those are they, uh, I think every batch that he made or every one that he made used different parts. He kind of used whatever was around. So some of them have like uh, Packard distributor caps on them or Buick or all these different things. I know Packard is one of the common ones. Um, and then they used like, uh, I think somewhere I was reading like six of, uh, or V, uh, I'm sorry, straight six like Chevy Mallory points or something like that. So he used all kinds of different parts. They're really cool when you can get one that's together enough to at least get part numbers for what you need. If you get one that's just empty, can be kind of hard. Those ones also were neat because a lot of them had a uh, setup on them. Where you could have a cable in the car that you could actually pull them to advance and retard the timing. You would basically leave it a little loose. You could pull a cable and advance or retard the timing. So you could have the timing set for starting the engine for that it's retarded. And then you can actually advance it for uh, when you're actually running. Uh, so it makes it a little easier to start the car when it's cold and everything like that. So the the um, those Kong distributors can go for thousands of dollars people ask for them sometimes but a lot of times if they're in pieces I, I would shy away from them I don't have one myself currently because of all the ones I've found in the wild so to speak have been missing the cap or different parts and I've been just like scared to get in over my head buying one and not be able to find the obscure parts that he needs so that is a really bitchy one if you can find one that is one of the most sought after if you will uh, for those. Now another neat option for uh, if you want to run dual plugs there was the uh, I think it was a Nash Twin 8 distributor that was a dual plug distributor that can be modified to run on a flathead I believe with an EPA cover you can modify the bottom and the gear to run on a flathead and it actually is set up with 16 plug wire uh, pieces on the cap uh, that you can actually put those terminals on and run dual plug. So there are some heads out there that are currently being made. I think in Australia they're reproducing some of the Yoko heads that were made back in the day and, um, and if you can find originals which are really rare. But you can run dual plug on a flathead which looks wild. Um, supposedly worked better for better combustion. I don't know but that was kind of the sales pitch back in the day. You see them on some of the real high-end uh, dry lakes and, and, and drag cars back in the early days um, and it really gives a wild look but that was the distributor you could run. I've only ever seen like one or two of them in the wild. I actually missed one at um, California. Uh, oh, oh yeah, Turlock. So we were at Turlock and I chatted to a really nice guy that had some really neat uh, early Ford parts and he had one on the ground I was kind of surprised that I knew what it was um, and I talked to him about it for like about cars for like an hour and then I walked away and totally forgot to buy the distributor he wasn't there the last time I was there and I missed out on it that was like the only time I've come up on one that was uh, even reasonable so to speak so really really cool setup if you're looking to run a twin plug you can run that Nash distributor um, there's some great pictures of it online of, of it set up on some of these engines with the dual plug set up. It just looks out of this world. All right, so the last one we're going to cover is we're getting into the most obscure and expensive section of ignition setups for a flathead, and that is magnetos. As with any engine, any hot rod engine you're going to run into, magneto is the most sought after thing to put on, an, on a hot rod, and it also can be the most expensive. It doesn't make sense if you are on a budget and you have like basically a stock engine, there is no need to have a Magneto. Just run a stock distributor or maybe find a swap me fine dual point and you will be just fine. It'll look cool and you're not gonna have like a thousand dollars or something into a Magneto like you will with a lot of the Magnetos and up from there. So the most common Magnetos that you will find for any engine is a Vertex Scintilla style. That is a style that was used on all kinds of dirt roundy round cars and uh, drag racers and all that type of stuff. They pretty much all ran the, this Vertex style Magneto and they are like your builder Magneto that the, you could swap all the parts around. The caps pretty much fit everything uh, just depending on the, the number of cylinders. The body is pretty much the same for all of them uh, aside from just age difference. And then the bases were different depending on the engine they fit and you could swap guts around uh, and they were pretty, pretty nice in that manner. Uh, these Magnetos you will find at swap meets from time to time. The price on them is all over the board. Uh, pretty much 
you're going to have to expect that anyone you find at a swap meet, unless the guy just took it off a running engine or just had it redone, is going to need to be redone. So if you start spending over $1,000 on an unknown Magneto, a Vertex Magneto, you're in trouble because you can end up getting one built brand new from one of the ignition guys. Um, you can get it redone and it'll cost like the same or less money and a lot less runaround. So the Vertex Magnetos, the nice thing with most of them is they have advanced built into them and they have like a snapback on them that actually spins around to help with starting um, that will have that will help when you're starting the car when it's cold. They are a little more friendly to a street car because of this um, because of this fact. But a lot of these magnetos, because they look the same, the guts of them can be different. So be careful when you're buying Vertex or Scintilla magnetos because the internals on them can be can be messed with. Whether it has opposite rotation for a boat or it was uh, a base or a body that was used on something that was you know, looks different than what it's marked, or the internals. Um, some of them may not have an advance built into them. So there's all different things like that, depending on the application that you need to watch out for. When I buy these magnetos, um, a lot of times I try and spend anywhere from, I mean, best case scenario is a hundred bucks type thing, but up to like five, 600 bucks, you can buy one of these magnetos and have it redone as long as there's nothing major wrong with it. And you're still not underwater with one of these. But again, think of it, you're into the $800, $900 range at that point or, or, or up to have a Magneto and put it on your car. Now, the nice thing with Magnetos are that they don't require any electronics to run them. They are self, uh, the, the, they provide their own spark. So they say they have a coil built inside of them and by you rotating them, when on the vertexes, when they have the snapback, it will create that a nice hot spark on a slow cranking engine. And this will require no electronics to run the engine, which is why a lot of uh, race cars are running them. All you need is a single terminal here. You basically need to ground the mag out to shut the engine off. So if you don't have this, you can't shut your engine off unless you you know choke it out at the carbs. So you can run a single wire to a kill switch on your car and you can sh shut it off so that it can't run. The other nice thing is, is for your car being stolen, Somebody can't jump in your car and start it if they don't know where the hidden kill switch is. So that's a really nice thing with a Mac. So Vertex Scintillas are probably the most affordable uh, mag to get into for a flathead. They will fit um, or they can be made to fit a API, APA style front cover, which is really nice because it already kind of has like that, um, that style distributor, like I said earlier, like a modern style distributor, so which a lot of these are made to fit, so you can slide it right in. And as long as it has the APA style gear that's put on it, you can drop it right in and run it on your engine, which is really nice. So Vertexes are really nice. Um, you can also get some obscure, like right angle, scintilla right angle setups for these that you can run off the front of the engine. This one I have here is again, getting in the expensive and obscure side of things. This is a French Ford flathead uh, factory forward part that bolts on the front that has a right angle drive to run a distributor or a magneto right off of it. Just has a tang set up on the bottom that works with the vertexes. So we pretty much had this redone and had the correct base put on, slid in and it's ready to go. So this is a, an example of a way you can do it. And really you're paying all the money for the fancy drive that's on there, but you can have a vertex uh, modify to run with your APA setup if you're not trying to go that crazy. It'll get you in that $800,000 range, maybe a little higher um, when you're doing it that way. If you have to buy a right angle drive for your Vertex or Scintilla mag, those on their own can end up being like $1,000 or more depending on what it is. So that is the Vertex. Now we get into the more obscure stuff. As far as bolts on magnetos go, Harman Collins is probably the most common one you're going to see that bolted right on the front of the engine in place of the stock, um, either diver's helmet or crab style distributor. They will bolt right on in the front of that. They're quite large. They're actually like, they're funny shape. They're rectangular, they're like this big, uh, pretty big. And those are the, probably the most common ones you see. Now that they, they, they look bitching, they look really cool. A lot of times they're polished. But again, like all the Harman Collins stuff, they used like all their own parts. The coil inside of them was its own Harman Collins style coil that was inside of them. And like the points and all that stuff is pretty much specific to that uh, Magneto. So a lot of times you see those Magnetos where guys are asking a lot of money and they don't know anything about the Magneto. And because of that, 
it, it's hard to say, is it good, is it not good? Um, but they definitely are cool looking. Now, the only thing to think about on that on a street driven car is that Magneto is really big and can sometimes get in the way of the fan and, and some other different things or with clearance issues because they are so large. You definitely have to keep that in mind when you're putting them on there. Now, they have that same style Harman Collins Magneto that actually that they would put on a like pedestal or a base to fit into other engines, Oldsmobiles, Cadillacs, Hemis, all FEs, all different stuff. And also I've seen occasionally that where it was put on in an EPA cover. Again, they're really large, so it ends up sticking out and basically like touching your radiator. And that was meant for like an all race application, so it isn't really the best, but you can fit the earlier style ones on the front on a street driven car and it will work. Again, they look really cool and it's probably one of the most unusual, like easy to find, quote unquote, uh, Magneto setups. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about for Magnetos is the expensive, obscure, like stuff that doesn't really make sense unless you want something that's really, really uh, rare or you're building an old historic car that had this specific style Magneto on it. So right angle drives and um, any of the special drives, if you will, so to speak, are, are the ones that starts getting into the really rare, obscure stuff. And this is where I'm not gonna to go totally left field and uh, and get into all the different magnetos that were out there. So the most common ones you're gonna see, probably number one is the is the Barker. And then you're gonna see the, the Poundin uh, magnetos are common, well, not common, but you see them as far as these go. All these, mag these, these different drives have in general is they're just basically a cast drive that is getting you in a position where you can run the magneto um, in, in a position that you want and also gets you a Magneto that is very common. So pretty much all of these use a tractor style Wyco like X Magneto uh, built onto that drive. So there's the Barkers that are like, I think the V or X style uh, drives. There's the, the one that's, I forget the model number they call it, maybe it was model Y, that was, uh, that's horizontal straight across that you can't run normal uh, water pumps on. They were made for electric water pumps or no water pumps at all. There is the, I think the X is like the V drive style one that went out like this. They use two four cylinders on all of those and they really look bitching, but they use two four cylinder Waco magnetos. The reason to do that again is that the parts were easy to come by. If you broke your, your race car on a Friday night at the race, you could go on Saturday morning and go to a tractor store at, or a tractor repair place, get those parts, put them right in, and you're back and running, no problem at all. Um, that's why they use those. Also, the manufacturers, when they were building them, it, it was easy to just use a extremely universal magneto when they were building the bases. Um, all of these bases, really, there's nothing special about them other than they were designed for a certain, like, engine or type of racing or different things like that. So really you're just finding something that's obscure. So I have in the free T, we found a pounded mag that we found at Turlock and I had redone with, a, you know, it had a Wyco mag on it, I had the mag redone on it and uh, worked out really great. There's really no reason I picked that mag other than it was obscure. I think it was built, San Diego might've been, I, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but they were built basically by like two guys that were casting these and making them, they're like numbered for each guy that needed them. So they're just rare early hot rod stuff. There's no reason to have this stuff other than if you want something that's obscure. Um, all of them work the same, they just have you know, separate magnetos. So um, the downside to using any of these, these V drive or right angle drives that use the Wyco or tractor style magnetos is that they have no um, advance in them. Basically they are full advance from the get-go. So when you're cranking that, and they also don't have like a snapback for um, for helping with slow cranking to give you that, that speed in the Magneto. So as fast as you're cranking the Magneto, or the engine, the Magneto is turning. So if you have a slow, like six volt engine, or, or, or you have a battery that's kind of dead, you won't get the spark that you may need to start that engine, especially if it's something that's high compression. So you need to have a good setup engine or you're gonna have problems with that. I've, had, I've been fighting that with the T. I have a little tiny battery and if I don't get the thing started right away, it may start cranking a little slow and then the thing may be hard to start. The great thing with them is they are kind of bulletproof and they work. Once you get the thing started, everything's running and good, they just work. You know, there's no extra stuff to them. There's no special parts. You can still get Wyco Magneto tractor uh, ignition parts 
like they're super common, they're super cheap. And for instance, the rebuild by Pounded Setup with the Waco Mag was like 130 or 150 bucks to totally rebuild it. And a Vertex might cost three, four, five, six, seven hundred dollars, depending on what it needs and how much you have to swap stuff around. So it can be very exp inexpensive, but the initial purchase to get that right angle drive can be very expensive as well. And a lot of times they can cost thousands of dollars to get one that's actually on your engine and running. So any of those V drives, angle drives, dual magneto setups that are out there, um, they're gonna be very expensive, hard to find, and you definitely need to be able to tinker with your own stuff to get it up and running. It's not something you're just gonna drop in and turn the key and it's ready to go. But once they're up and running, they're pretty much bulletproof and you just wire up that kill switch, start the engine up and it's good to go and it works really well. So that is our long-winded crash course for ignitions on the flathead engines. Uh, this again is not going to give you every single option that is out there. I'm just trying to give you guys a little bit of a crash course. So if you're looking to get uh, aftermarket ignition or hop up your stock ignition. Maybe this will give you a jump start and a place to look. I definitely want to mention there is a great thread on the Jalopy Journal or the HAM that is rare uh, ignition uh, or magnetos uh, thread that we will uh, drop a link to down below. Definitely check that thread out. There is some crazy obscure stuff that's mentioned in there. It's a quite an old thread, but it's still great information. It'll kind of give you an idea of um, each of these different magnetos or ignition setups that you can geek out on and go down a rabbit hole like I like to do from time to time. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Catch you later.